to you just to make the video shorter. Yeah, we can talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to restart the video so there's not these ethically large slides. Do you have more slides yet, or it's no, we just went today. Okay, so so I'm, I'm, I I want to ask both groups if possible if, if if we kind of compared and contrasted these two designs, uh, what can we learn from that comparison? Uh, in other words, you guys had one approach, uh, you have a slightly different approach. What, how would you compare and contra contrast these two designs? I guess the main difference that I see overall is just the pillar design. Um, the idea of one solid pillar versus a footing with two columns. And I guess personally, I do not know which one is better in the real world situation. I thought having it solid just because of turbulence caused by the river possibly. But that was I tend thing. to agree with that. The, I don't know. I and you know I'm not. Without like knowing exactly how fast this river is going, with the two columns, it seems like and you, know, you could get some eddies and things. Okay, and, refresh my memory. How many columns, four columns, were in yours compared to this? And, and how was the spacing of yours compared to this? Same spacing that way. So if you look like five columns, side view, it would look exactly the same. So very similar. Design. The really only difference is they these guys have a long oblong yeah, column and these guys yeah. have two circular columns. Oh, yeah. three yeah. bar in the in right. The, yeah. And I think you probably want to do as much yeah. three bar. Yeah. Just to. That's what I guess we're not an expertise thing. Yeah. Well, I think none of things. us are. So with your design, it would be less pertinent to put it in in the width too because we have the column, so we have more of that moment in the middle to right. the negate. Okay, and then uh, oh, the, the deck thickness was the foot on both, correct? Uh, ours was at nine inches. Yes. Okay. And it actually looked like from what these guys did with their that the thinner deck actually strengthened the bridge in that to a certain extent. Right. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's because a nine inch versus that is 25% heavier so than what you guys So, So you would lean for the thinner deck? That seems like it. From these guys' to calculation. A, yeah. To a point. No, I wouldn't have thought that before I saw the air. Going thinner, I mean, you're. Yeah. Well, and we had looked this up, didn't we, as a group? Or maybe that was yeah, the other yeah, group. Yeah, that was nine good. inch was, it was between nine and 12 was yeah. kind of standard. So. All right, all right. The other thing I see different here is uh, you've got the. Support columns going five feet below grade, and yours were uh, two, feet, right? two, two feet, two feet, two feet with, with a support uh, a footing. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any discussion about those two different approaches? So we mainly did five feet because we really don't know the soil fairly you know how that was going to um, be, and so. Uh, we did five feet just to, you know, since it, it doesn't, since it, the cost is relatively lower um, for what our, our goal to be around was, we was like, we thought, you know what, it's safer is always better. So we just went with five feet because we thought that that would be safer. Um, but yeah, we're not experts either. Yeah, yeah. Where you guys got some, because you found some numbers that said well, a third should be below. Yeah, that was the numbers I found for that was more specifically for like putting fences for posts and other holes sure. into the ground. But you, I mean, but I figured that's fairly. It, it's in a way a similar to. Looked like you guys had some numbers based on soil mechanics. Yeah, there was some. Data that we had gotten based on, you know, obviously different loading capacities for different soils, and we went with the lowest one that they had. Sand or whatever it is. Yeah. That really didn't matter in our in our design. The two feet we went below grade was just to prevent soil erosion from the water. Yeah, the two, and that's what it. I don't think the bearing stress is what that is. That interaction between. Right. 
I don't think that's the problem going deeper. The problem going deeper, why you want to go deeper, is because you've got this kind of unknown force of the river going this way. So in my brain, like, the further down you go, the better, mm -hmm. because you've got this that we didn't really take it into account because we didn't have enough information. But and then I know so. one question you were kind of asking them is, but I think it's what you were asking is, the force on the columns is that I have calculated for the six inch or the 12 inch wide column would be 23.9 PSI for like the footing. On, I'm sorry, and you're like I, assuming that I understood, like, weren't you asking 23 like, PSI? Yeah, yes. like for like right the crushing. stress. Yeah, yeah, That's and then the for the which is nothing. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm probably creating wide, a bigger one with my foot on the ground. Yeah, and for the 18 inch wide one, it was 16.1. So, nothing. Yeah. Okay, the one other thing that's gone through my mind the ends of these, uh, of the bridge itself, do you have any recommendation regarding the ends of the bridge uh, and the support of those ends? Or, uh, we, uh, I'll, I'll take this one because I, I told them to not worry about it because okay. we don't know enough about the river bottom. I said they all put, I just said put another footing at the end. So these guys put a column there. You guys put, yeah, we have a, did you have any columns or was it just footing the footing? Yeah, similar footing? Just yeah, a footing. Foot column, just a two footing. So that's what I told them to do. That's not probably how you do it. I don't. No enough bridge. The other thing I'm wondering should that area under the bridge be concrete to prevent erosion uh, and to stabilize that would that probably be ideal because we don't have the information to do the calculation. Yeah, yet. what they usually do is, I mean, if you look at it, they build this like kind of L shaped, what looks, what we can see looks like an L. It might be that huge, just a gigantic footing that comes out and goes like that. But, um, and then that's kind of how to it's somehow used. stabilize that river bank. Right, yeah. We, we, and I told them not to. And like, that question came up several times, and I just kind of, we don't, we don't know enough about it. And with both of our designs, I mean, ours at like the most expensive was just under 5,000 or around 5,000, and theirs was what was it? Four, two? Yeah, so it was four, two, and you had budgeted 15,000, so either way, you have plenty of beef it up, is what yeah, I say. Cost. We could headroom that you could use either of our designs and then add whatever you see fit. And again, those those costs are all materials. And yeah, materials. Labor is uh, unknown. Oh well, these yeah. are the numbers you gave. Right. So right. that's what we yeah. used. So. No, I just want to clarify yeah. for the the video. But yeah. Yeah. The dollars we're mentioning do not include the yes. labor factor. And the idea was that the villagers were going to be helping with the labor, correct? Because that's that was part of the reason why we went with the uh, the columns, being that the form can be fairly easy to use. You know, it, it's user friendly. It's you, know, you put it, you, you yeah. get it too, put it down, put your rebar in, and pour concrete, and you're pretty much set. All right. In terms of this decision between the the full support all the way across with the the semicircle ends versus the columnar support. Uh, does anybody have any conclusion or recommendation to which way to go? Or is it kind of based on their experience in that country with these kinds of designs? I think input from, from that side would be helpful. However, I think that the, I, obviously I think their design is, would work great in that situation. I think ours would work well as well. But again, we were trying to go for what would support the bridge, but also keeping in mind the, the physical labor that would have to go into to putting these things in. And your their cost is definitely going to be less, and that's yeah. less kind of yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Um, I think the water is the yeah. factor, the unknown. And to me, with the water, the oblong column that they came up with seemed like a okay. Because then you wouldn't get any of the yeah. going around yeah. and then yeah. hitting the other one and. Right. and uh, and it seems like that could really do some wreak some havoc. And if you look at bridges around here, 
they'll, if they do have the columns and they're in a bridge, what's in the water is still just a big concrete foot. Um, and then the columns are, I think, I feel like I looked at a few since I'd have to look again, but it seems like the water level, is, if they do you know, go away from kind of a solid thing, the water level is below where the columns, so to speak, start coming out. And if this water potentially goes all the way up to the top of the bridge, then that's what would be its fastest as well. What's that? Okay. And that's what would be its fastest as well. Yeah. Right. All right. So awesome. <clears throat>